O bayan ng Diyos, bigyan natin ang pagpapahalaga, ang pagdating ng lubang kagalang-galang, ang obispo ng Diyosisis ng Antipolo, Roberto Cruz Santos Didi. Pasalubungan po natin sila ng masibagbong palakpakan. Sa puntong ito, sabay-sabay tayong magpugay sa watawat ng Pilipinas sa pag-awit ng lupang hinirang, nasusundan ng Rizal Mabuhay at Himno del Vaticano sa saliw at kumpas ng Antipolo City Band. Muli sa puntong ito, sabay-sabay tayong magpugay sa watawat ng Pilipinas sa pag-awit ng lupang hinirang na susundan ng Rizal Mabuhay at Imno del Vaticano sa saliw at kumpas ng Antipolo City Band. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
Matutunghayan natin ngayon ang pagkakaloob ng susi ng probinsya ng Rizal at lunsod ng Marikina na simbolo ng lahat ng bayan at lunsod na kumakatawan o bumubuo ng diocese ng Antipolo na pangungunahan ng ating gobernadora, kagalang-galang Nina Hinalres. Atin pong palakpakan ang pagkakaloob ng susi sa ating ikalimang obispo, Most Reverend Bishop Ruperto Cruz Santos. Ito naman po ay susundan ng isang photo opportunity kasama ang lahat ng ating mga lingkod bayan sa ating lalawigan at lunsod ng Marikina, kasama ang ating mahal na obispo, lubhang kagalang-galang Roberto Cruz Santos. Mga kadyosesis, isa pong malakas na palakpakan para sa ating ikalimang obispo, Lubang Kagalanggalang, Roberto Cruz Santos.
my most reverend Roberto Cruz Santos, with whom faith, belief, and confess is and everything that is contained in the symbol of faith, namely, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the Word of God, whether written or hunted down in tradition, which the Church, either by solemn judgment or by the ordinary and universal magisterium, sets forth to be believed as divinely revealed. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything definitively proposed by the Church regarding the teachings on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submissions of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise their authentic magisteriums, even if they do not intend to proclaim these teachings by a definitive act.
His Excellency, whose Reverend Bishop Roberto Cruz Santos Didi, was born on October 30, 1957, to the late Norberto Santos and Aurelia Cruz. He has one brother named Rodelio and three sisters, namely Maria Lourdes, Maria Corazon, and Rosalind. The family is a native of Kaingin San Rafael, Bulacan. He finished his elementary at Kaingin Elementary School in 1971 in San Rafael, Bulacan, and his high school at the Our Lady of Guadalupe Minor Seminary in Makati City in 1975. He graduated in college at San Carlos Major Seminary in 1979 and finished his theology studies from the same seminary in 1983. In 1990, he obtained his licentiate in church history from the Pontificia Universita Gregoriana in Rome. Bishop Ruperto was ordained to the Sacred Order of Priesthood on September 10, 1983 by the late Jaime Cardinal Sin at the Manila Cathedral. After his ordination, he held the following pastoral assignments. 1983 to 1986, parochial vicar at the Immaculate Conception Parish in Pasig. 1983 to 1987, chaplain of Pasig Catholic College in Pasig. 1986 to 1987, pastor at San Antonio Abad Church in Maybunga, Pasig. In 1990 to 1997, professor of church history, patrology, and homiletics at San Carlos Graduate School of Theology and Holy Apostle Senior Seminary, both in Makati. From 1990 to 1997, guest priest at the Shrine of Our Lady of Peace in Edsa and Our Lady of Pilar Parish in Pilar Village, Las Piñas. From 1990 to 1992, Prefect of Discipline of the Philosophy Department in San Carlos Seminary. 1992 to 1997, Academic Dean of San Carlos Graduate School of Theology. 1992 to 1995, Guest Lecturer for Novices and Postulants of St. Paul of Chartres as Santipolo Mother House. 1992 to 1997, Library Director of Archbishop Gabriel Reyes Memorial Library at the San Carlos Graduate School of Theology. From 1992 to 1997, Chief Archivist of Manila Archdiocesan Archives and Curator and Director of Manila Archdiocesan Museum. Outside the country, he held the following offices. Consultor of Pontificia Commissione per i Beni Culturali della Chiesa in the Vatican. From 1997 to 1999, Vice Rector and Economist of Pontificio Collegio Filipino in Rome. In 2000, Rector of Pontificio Collegio Filipino in Rome. In 2003, National Coordinator of the Italian Bishops' Conference for the Pastoral Care of Filipino Migrants in Italy. In 2005, member of Pontificio Comitato per i Congressi Eucaristici Internationali in the Vatican. 2011 to 2015, Chairman, CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Pastoral Care of Migrants and Itinerant People. From 2011 to 2015, Vice Chairman, CBCP Episcopal Commission of Pontificio Collegio Filipino in Rome. In 2015 to 2022, Governing Council Member for Asia of the International Migration Commission, Vatican. He was consecrated as Bishop of Balanga, Bataan on June 24, 2010 to succeed Bishop Socrates Villegas Didi and has been shepherding the faithful of that province for 13 years. At present, he holds the following pastoral assignments. Since 2015, Episcopal Coordinator for Asia of the World Apostolic Congress on Mercy. Since 2019, Member CBCP Permanent Council, Vice Chairman CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Pastoral Care of Migrants and Itinerant People, Chairman CBCP Commission on Pontificio Collegio Filipino in Rome, and Bishop Promoter of Stella Maris Philippines. On May 24, 2023, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has appointed Bishop Roberto Cruz Santos Didi 
to be the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Antipolo following the acceptance of the resignation of His Excellency, Most Reverend Francisco de Leon Didi, who served the diocese as bishop since 2016. With welcome hearts and praises to the Lord Almighty, let us all stand and join the choir as we start the Solemn Eucharistic Liturgy.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Let the apostolic letter from the Holy See be read. Francis, Bishop Servant of the Servants of God, to our Venerable Brother Ruperto Cruz Santos, until now Bishop of the See of Balanga, appointed as the Bishop of Antipolo, greetings and apostolic blessings. Indeed, the great hope which arises from and is fully completed in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ leads Christians through their whole life to their heavenly homeland, desiring that its proclamation should never cease, we, governing from the Apostolic See, consider the various needs of the ecclesial communities and wherever circumstances demand this, we choose eligible men to discharge this ministry together with us. Since the See of Antipolo is now in need of a pastor, owing to the resignation of our venerable brother Francisco de Leon, we turn to you, venerable brother, who in your current exercise of the Episcopal duties in the community of Balanga have proven to be a man adorned with an array of virtues, both human and priestly. Therefore, Having been received the advice of the dicastery for bishops and having considered the matter at hand, we release you from the bond of your previous see and we name and appoint you Bishop of Antipolo, together with all the rights and imposing on you the obligations of this mandate according to the norms of the Code of Canon Law. Accordingly, we desire that you inform the people and the clergy of this ecclesial community of our decree, and we exhort them to provide you a sign of filial love and obedience in faith. And indeed, we likewise exhort you to show them paternal care as a sign of being a faithful servant of Christ. Finally, we pray that in acting in all these matters and concerns, the light of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, may help, lead, and be abundantly present to you, together with the sweetest intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her spouse, Saint Joseph, given in Rome at the Lateran Basilica on the 24th of May in the year of our Lord, 2023, the 11th of our pontificate, Francis. Let us therefore bless the Lord.
with faith in Jesus Christ and with love in my heart, I accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Diocese of Antipolo. I promise to serve faithfully the church in this diocese as a loving father, gentle shepherd, faithful teacher, and steward of the mysteries of Christ.
Lualhati sa Diyos sa kaitasan. whose only begotten Son and trusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the Song of Songs. The bride says, On my bed at night, I sought him, whom my heart loves. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise then and go about the city. In the streets and crossings, I will seek him whom my heart loves. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchmen came upon me as they made their rounds of the city. Have you seen him whom my heart loves? I had hardly left them when I found him whom my heart loves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shepherd there is nothing I shall want in green pastures he gives me repose he leads me in still waters refreshing my soul he guides me of righteousness. Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want, I shall
my shepherd there is nothing nothing I shall want A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. saw the stone removed from the tomb 
So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put Him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over it into the tomb, and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what He told her. The Gospel of the Lord. His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Vincula, Archbishop of Manila, His Excellency, Most Reverend Archbishop Charles John Brown, our Apostolic Nuncio, my beloved predecessors, His Excellency, Most Reverend Bishop Gabriel Reyes, most Reverend 
Bishop Francisco de Leon, my auxiliary, most reverend Bishop Noli Buko, my beloved brother bishops, reverend fathers, religious sisters, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our honorable and beloved government officials of the province of Rizal, Governor Honorable Inarichi Inares, Honorable Reynaldo San Juan, our Vice Governor, our Honorable Representatives, Congressman Michael John Duavit, Congressman Emilio Tatuanco, Congressman Jose Arturo Garcia, Congressman Will Fidel Felipe Nogales, our government officials of our city, the seat of the diocese, Honorable Mayor Casimiro Iñares, Honorable Vice Mayor Sepina Catlambayan, and our beloved mayors of our towns, our beloved vice mayors, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Ang buhay ay isang paglalakbay. Ang buhay ay isang paglalayag. Meron tayong nais nice marating, mapot o makuha. Meron tayong pupuntahan o ikaw o ako ay nagbabalik. Meron tayong uuwian at hindi mo na iiwanan pa. Ako ay nagbabalik. Sa aking pag-aaral sa Sangkalo Seminary sa Makati, naranasan ko na simulan kong isabuhay ang pagiging pari dito sa inyo. Bilang seminarista sa Teloyhia, ako una sa lahat ay pinapunta sa parokya ng Our Lady of the Light doon sa bayan ng Kainta sa panahon pa ng mga CICM Fathers. Ang kura paroko noon ay si Father Walter de Wilder. Sa aking pagdalaw sa inyo, makakaasa po kayo ng pasalubong Coco Jam na gawa ni Nabandong at Santos. Kakampal na rin naman na maito ang natatang nating suman sa ibos. Sa nalalapit kong pagtatapos sa Teloyhia para maging kanap na pari, ako ay pinadala noon ng Prefect of Discipline na ngayon ang ating puting obispo Francisco de Leon sa bayan ng Cardona sa parokya ng Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Ang ating parish priest noon ay si Father Patrick Ronan, isang Irish Columban missionary. Hindi ko malilimutan ang aming mga magaganda at natatanging alaala sa pamamangka upang makarating sa Talim Island. Muli tayong mamamangka sa Talim Island sa Cardon at Binangonan site at pagsasaluhan nating muli ang kanduli. Nang ako ay nagbalik sa San Carlos Seminary bilang professor, prefect, sa college department at panghuli academic dean sa theology department, kaming lahat sa San Carlos Seminary sa pagsisimula ng kada school year sa unang linggo ng buwan ng Hunyo ay naglalakad dasal patungo rito. Umalis kami doon sa San Carlos Seminary ng hating gabi upang makarating at makapagdiyo ng Santa Misa sa ikaanin ng umaga rito. Inaalay namin ang pagsisimula ng aming pag-aaral, paghuhubog, at humingi kami sa Kanya ng Kanyang makainang patnubay at pamamagitan sa Kanyang anak na Sesus. Hindi ba't batid natin, hindi hindi ka bibiguin ng iyong ina. Hinding hindi ka bibiguin ng iyong ina. At habang ako ay naka-assign sa San Carlos Seminary, 
Mula noong 1992 hanggang 1996, tuwing Webes ng umaga, ako ay nagdadrive sa Ortigas Avenue Extension na maluwag pa ang traffic noon. Papunta sa Our Lady of Church Convent upang magturo sa mga novices at postulant ng SPC Sisters. Tiyak, sa pagsapit ng February 2, ako ay nasa inyo. Pagsapit ng February 2, sa darating na maraming taon, ako ay darating sa inyo. Datapot mula noong 1997, hindi na ako nakabalik. Hindi na ako nakaulit pumunta rito. Subalit, kahit pa na malayo at napalayo, ako sa kanyang piling, sa kanyang tahanan dito sa Antipolo, ako naman ay napalapit sa Espiritu sa kanya. Siya ay aming nakasama, kapiling namin, doon sa Pontificio Collegio Pilipino sa Roma, Italia, siya ang aming patrona. Nuestra Senyora de la Paz y Bienbiaje. Sa ating buhay, hindi hindi ka iiwan ng iyong ina. Ikaw ay kanyang sasamahan, hindi hindi ka niya pababayaan, tayo kanyang ingatan, tayo ay kanyang sasalubungin. Ngayon para sa akin, ako ay kanyang tinatawag. Pinauwi na ako ng ating ina, ang mahal na birhen, sa huling yugto ng aking pagkapari sa kanyang tahanan dito sa Antipolo upang higit na makapaglingkot sa marapin niyang anak at kawan. Ang aking tukon ay paulit-ulit sa kanyang winika, narito ang iyong alipin. Ang aking sakot sa pagtanggap ay... Hayan ang iyong ina. Ako po ay nagbabalik. Narito po ako. Nag-iisa. Walang kasama, walang dala. Bahala na po kayo sa akin. Bahala na po kayo sa akin. Masasabi ko lamang na sa akin pagdating sa inyong piling, ay kaisa ninyo ako. Ako ay katuwang ninyo, katulog lamang ninyo ako. Kaisa, katuwang, katulong, yan ang aking pagdating. Una, ako po ay kaisa ninyo. Ano man ang ating daratnan, ano man ang ating dadaanan, ano man ang ating gagawin at haharapin, ako po ay inyong kaisa. Kahit na mahaba o matagal, kahit pa na mahirap o bako-bako ang paglalakad, kahit pa na maalon at malakas ang hangin sa pagbabangka, kaisa po niyo ako, ako po sa inyo ay sasama. Sa mga lugar na malayo at mapanganib, sa mga taong na bibigatan at nangangailangan, ako po ay inyong makikita, ako po ay inyong marinig, ako po ay inyong mahawakan. Tulad ng ating mahal na ina, ang ating buting patrona, ang birhen ng kapayapaan at mabuting pagalakbay, kayo ay aking pupuntahan, kaya aking lalapitan, kaya aking paglilingkuran. Ako po tulad niya na really ready and hurry to a town in the hill country. Luke chapter 1 verse 39. Kayo po ay aking kakausapin. Kaya aking alagaan. Kaya aking ipapanalangin, tutulungan. At sasabihin ko rin sa kanya, they have no more wine. At kay aking ahanapin, kay aking alalayan at papalalahanan, do whatever He tells you. 
Kung tayo man ay susubukin, masasaktan o mawawalan, higit nyo akong makakasama, lalo pa akong makikiisa, gaya ng ating mahal na ina na naroon at nanatili sa paanan ng krus. John chapter 19, verse 25. Sila ay matagal nang magkasintahan. Sa kailang palagi ang pamamasyal pagkatapos ang lingguhang pagtatrabaho, niyaya niya ang kanyang kasintahang lalaki na pumunta sila sa Antipolo. Nais niyang magsimba, humingi ng bendisyon, at meron siyang hihilingin mula sa kanya. Ganon nga ang kanilang ginawa. Naupo sila sa tapi na isang malaking puno sa ibaba ng simbahan. Sinabi niya sa kanyang kasintahan, Pa sa kapakanan at magandang kinabukasan ng aking mga kapatid, nais kong magibang bansa, nais kong maging overseas Filipina worker, isang domestic worker doon sa Roma, sa Italia. Ako ba, ay yung papayagan. Ako ba ay yung hahayaan? Nagulat at nalungkot ang kasintahang lalaki, hindi kagat siyang nakapagsalita. Pagkatapos ng ilang sandali, si kanyang sinabi, Nais ko na tayo ay makasama. Subadal sa mabuting layunin at para na rin sa mayos na kinabukasan ng iyong mga kapatid at magulang, bakit ako ahad lang sa iyong magandang balak? Nagpasalamat ang kasintahang babae at may pag-alalang nagpatuloy na sinabi, Magtatagal ako roon, marahil tatlo o apat na taon. At siya ay nagtanong, Meron pa ba akong babalikan? Meron pa ba akong babalikan? Natahimik ang lalaki na patingin sa kanya ng malalim at nawika. Alam ko, ibabalik ka sa akin ng Panginoong Diyos. Alam ko, ibabalik ka sa akin ng Panginoong Diyos. Mga kapatid, ibabalik sila ng Diyos sa ating bahay. Ibabalik ng Diyos ang lahat sa ating buhay. Ibabalik tayo ng ating mahal na Birhen sa piling ni Jesus. Tayo ay magiging kanyang kaysa. Muli tayong magkakasama. Ikalawa, katuwa ninyo ako. Wala pa akong may papakita, wala po akong nagawa. Tatapat maraming salamat sa ating mga nauna na sa akin sa kailang panahon, sa kailang pagpapagod, sa kailang pagpapastol, Obispo Gabriel, Francisco at Noli, na matibay, maunlat at maganda na ang diocesis ng Antipolo. Maraming salamat sa ating mga kaparehan, daisisan at religious, sa ating mga consecrated persons, dahil sa inyong pagdarasal, sa inyong pakikisa sa layunin diocesis ng Antipolo at pagsusunuran ang ating inang simbahan ay matatag, masagana at bongbo. Maraming salamat sa ating mga mananampalataya, sa ating mga namamahala at namumuno sa ating pamahalaan at simbahan na sa inyong pakipagtulungan, sa inyong pagdamay at paglilingkod, ang ating lalawikan ng Rizal, ang ating desesis ng Antipolo ay kinikilala, pinupuntahan at sentro ng pananampalataya at paglalakbay tasal na mga katolikong Pilipino. Hindi ba't magandang tignan, pangarapin at gawin na tayo, ang disis ng Antipolo, ang lalawigan ng Rizal ay maging spiritual pyramids capital of the Philippines. 
Masasabi ko po na hindi pa ako nagpupunla, ako ay umaani na. Subalit hindi naman dapat na ako ay kukuya-kuya ko'y na lamang habang kumakain ng kasoy. Tama lamang na ako ay magpagod at maglingkod. Dapat lamang na ako'y magpawis at magbanat ng buto at maghasik ng panibago. At yun po ay gagawin ko para sa inyo. Pangako ko sa aking sarili at panalangin ko sa ating mahal na ina, ang pira ng Antipolo, hinding hindi ko sasayangin ang iyong pinagpaguran. Hinding hindi ko ipapawalang bahala ang iyong pagpapakasakit at hinding hindi ko ang kinin ang mga matatamis at mabuting bunga ng inyong pinaghirapan. Hinding hindi ko ang kinin ang matatamis at mabuting bunga na inyong pinaghirapan. Ako po ay katuwang lamang. Opo, inyong katuwang. Sa pagtataguyod ng inyong itinayo at sinimulan, ako ay inyong katuwang. Sa inyong muling paglilinang at sa bagong pag-ahasik, ako po ay inyong pag-utusan. Sa pagtatahak sa panibagong gawain at sa paglalakad sa malayong lupain, ako po sa inyo ay mangunguna at sa inyo rin ay aakay at handa rin mag-alay. Sa ating muling pagtatayo at pagbubo sa ating panibagong pagsasaka o pumamangka, ako po ay laging sasama at sa iyo hindi mag-iiwan, hindi magpapabaya, hindi mawawala at hindi magwawala. Dumating po ako rito sa inyo, hindi isang mataas na tao, hindi isang makapangyarihan. Heto po ako tulad ninyo, kaisa ninyo, kasama ninyo. Ang inyong katuwang sa gawain ng Panginoon, tulad ninyo ngayon at tulad nila noon. With our national hero, Jose Rizal, and our province honored him with his surname, Rizal. We learn and live so much about his sacrificial love for our country. Yet, did you not know also about his solid devotion to the Holy Eucharist and his deep affections to our blessed Mother Mary? In his early life in Binyan, he would wake up at four in the morning to hear Holy Mass if there was any as a part of his daily life. Otherwise, he would study his lessons at that hour and went to Holy Mass afterwards. Opo, kaisa natin siya sa ating panamplatayang katoliko. Datapat katuwang din natin siya sa panamplatayang gawain at tradisyon dito sa Antipolo. Batay sa kasaysayan, On June 6, 1868, Jose Rizal and his father left Calamba to go on pilgrimage to Antipolo in order to fulfill his mother's vow which was made when Jose was born. Doña Teodora could not accompany them because she had just given birth to Trinidad. It was the first trip of Jose across Laguna de Bay and his pilgrimage to Antipolo. He and his father ride in a casco, birds. He was thrilled as a boy should be by his first lake voyage. He did not sleep the whole night as the casco sailed towards the Pasig River because he was owed by the magnificence of the watery expanse of Pasig River and the silence of the night. And writing many years later of his experience, he said, With that 
pleasure I saw the sun rise. It was the first time that I had seen the bright rays strike with dazzling effect to the surface of the vast lake. And after my intense prayers at the shrine of the Virgin of Antipolo, I and my father safely went to Manila. After intense prayers at the shrines of the Virgin of Antipolo, I and my father safely went to Manila. Naisip mo na ba, marahil tulad niya, dinala ka rin sa Antipolo na iyong mahal na ina o dahil sa iyong lola. Meron pong daylan kung bakit ka narito. Ikaw at ako ay kanyang pinapunta. Tayo po ay kaisa. Tayo po ay magkasama. Datapat panghuli at pangatlo. Ako po ay katulong lamang ninyo. Opo, panghuli, katulong lamang ninyo ako. Ang dami-dami po natin ngayon. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdating mula sa iba't ibang lalawikan, diocesis, at sa mga diocese and test ministries for the pastoral care of migrants and itinerant people. Chaplains and pastoral workers of Stella Maris Apostleship of the Seas at ang ating mga devotees and disciples of Divine Mercy Philippines. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga kapareyan sa Pontificio Colegio Pilipino sa Roma at sa ating mga kasamang mga buhay na bagong bayani ang ating overseas Filipino workers at seafarers na nakikisa, nakikinig at nanonood sa atin. Palagi kong pinagninilayan ang aking paghilang at pagtatalaga rito. At ako po ay labis na nagpapasalamat sa ating mahal na Santo Papa Francisco. Ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa pagtitiwala ng ating puting Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, Most Reverend Archbishop Charles John Brown. At sa aking pagninilay-nilay, hinahantilod ko na para bang tinatawag na ako ng ating mahalina na matapos akong mga laga at maglingkod sa kanyang matapat na kabyak ng puso na si Jose doon sa diocesis ng Balanga ay sa huling kabanata ng aking pagkapari sa naman ng aking kalingain paglingkuran at alagaan. Ito na marahil ang kanyang panawagan at atas sa akin ngayon. Take Mary and His Son. Mateo chapter 2 verse 14 Tayo po ay magkatulad Tayo po ay magkaparehas Sa ating pagalakbay tayo rin ay nadadapa Tayo rin ay nahirapan o minsan nasusukatan Marahil kayo rin ay nalilis ng daan o pinaghina ng kaloban Datapat sa mga salitang tayo na sa Antipolo ay himig ng panyaya at kasiguraduhan ng pagtanggap ng ating mahal na ina. Ang mga salitang tayo na sa Antipolo ay makainang pagtawag niya sa atin na tayo ang kanyang manak, tayo na anak at tara na anak, tayo na anak. At sa ating pagtugon, sa inyong pagpunta, ako sa inyo ay tutulong, ako sa inyo ay manguna, ako ay inyong katulong. Tulad din po ng ating mahal na patron, ating pinagdiriwang sa araw na ito, higit sa lahat sa bayan ng Pililya, si Santa Maria Magdalena, minsan sa ating buhay tayo rin ay nakakasala, marahil marami. Marahil madalas o marahil mabigat at paulit-ulit. 
Tulad din po ni Santa Maria Magdalena, tayo rin ay binabato ng masasakit na paratang o kaya gagamitin para sa kailang pansiling kaginawahan. Tulad niya, marahil marami na rin ang luha na dumaloy sa ating mga mukha para at sa paana ng ating maasawa o ng inyong maanak. Mga kapatid, tayo na sa Antipolo, ito ang bahay ng Panginoong Hesus. Ito ang dambana ng ating mahal na ina. Ito ang kanyang tahanan. At ito, sasabihin niya tayo, tahan na anak. Ito ang bahay ng Diyos. Ito ang dambana ng ating mahal na Biren Maria. Ito ang aking katidra. Dadapat yan din ang aking bibigasin at gagawin. Tahan na anak. Tayo na sa Antipolo, ito ang iyong tahanan, tahan na anak. Hindi ako magtitiin, hindi ako ako magiging pabigat, at hindi pa rin ako magpapahirap. Ako ay sa inyo isang katulong, inyong kasambahay. Mga minamahal ko mga kapatid, ang buhay isang paglalakbay, ang buhay isang paglalayag, ito na marahil ang uling kabanata ng aking paglalakbay. Isang malaking pagpapala at isang mabigat na pananagutan na guguling ko ito sa piling ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Antipolo. Datapat para sa kanya at para sa inyo, heto po ako, narito po ako, inyong kasama, isang katawang, inyo lamang katulong. Inyong kasama, isang katuwang, inyo lamang katulong. Sa ngala ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Please all rise. Let us pray to God our Father who has continually guided and accompanied us in our journey of faith all these years. With confidence, let us implore Him and pray. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, Mother and Teacher, that she may continue to be faithful in fulfilling her mission of teaching, guiding, and nourishing her children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, Ruperto, our Bishop, Noli, his auxiliary, all the bishops and clergy, that they may have strength to shepherd generously the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, that they may work together towards the dialogue of solidarity, the culture of peace, sharing of goods, and generosity of people of goodwill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, that they may always seek the ways of righteousness, justice and mercy, and lead our people with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the elderly, the sick, and all those in need, that they may be strengthened by our love for them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered, that we may be renewed in our faith life and may take part in shaping the church and society 
according to gospel values. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we lift up to you our petitions. As we trust in your mercy and wisdom, may we come to share the glory of your Son who draws our hearts to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that by sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose devoted homage of love was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is the right and just our duty and our salvation to glorify you in all things, Almighty Father, whose mercy is no less than your power through Christ our Lord. He appeared in the garden and revealed himself to Mary Magdalene who had loved him in life, witnessed him dying on the cross, sought him as he lay in the tomb, and was the first to adore him, newly risen from the dead. He honored her with the office of being an apostle to the apostles, so that the good news of new life might reach at the ends of all the earth. And so with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as in exhortation we are claimed. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power of the and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessings, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave him thanks. He said the blessings. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passions of your Son, his wondrous resurrection ascending to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblations of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you feel to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Virgin of Antipolo, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, <clears throat> we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim charge on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Roberto, our Bishop, Noli, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor shows now and forever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Give us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the holy receptions of your mysteries, O Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the message of the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, Most Reverend Archbishop Charles John Brown, D.D. Your Eminence Jose Cardinal Vincula, Archbishop of Manila, dear brother bishops, concelebrating priests, men and women religious, consecrated men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ, government officials, it gives me so much joy and happiness to be with you this morning for this extraordinarily beautiful liturgy of installation of your new bishop. The church, brothers and sisters, this morning celebrates continuity, that gift of continuity, that gift of continuing to be the people of God in history. We are living the synodal experience of the church in these years, and we oftentimes think of the synodal aspect of the church with the image of the caravan. We think of the church as a caravan of people traveling together. And of course, that's true. The church is a massive caravan traveling together here in 2023, but it's also a caravan that stretches through history with a before and an after, a caravan that goes forward into the future. And that is what we celebrate this morning, now this afternoon, this moment of transition the installation of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Ruperto Cruz Santos as the fifth Bishop of Antipolo. And it gives me so much joy to be part of that celebration this afternoon. As all of you know, His Excellency was ordained Bishop of Balanga on June 24th of 2010. So that means after 13 years of service in that diocese, the Holy Father Pope Francis, through me, his representative, asked Bishop Ruperto Santos to be transferred here to Antipolo. And the Holy Father was very grateful to your new bishop for having said yes to that new mission. And I say to His Excellency Ruperto Santos this morning, thank you, Your Excellency, for your availability to the work of the church here in Antipolo. But of course, we not only celebrate a new beginning at this moment of transition, we also celebrate with massive gratitude the Episcopate of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Francisco Mendoza de Leon, who, as you know, was ordained auxiliary bishop here in Antipolo almost 16 years ago on September 1st of 2007, and then became coadjutor bishop of Antipolo on November 21st, 2015. He succeeded as Bishop of Antipolo almost seven years ago on September 9th of 2016. Dear Bishop de Leon, speaking on behalf of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the entire Holy See, I thank you for your years of service here in Antipolo for your exemplary pastoral service to the people of God in this church. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Thank you, Your Excellency. Maramin, maramin salamat po. So here on this wonderful day, this feast of Mary Magdalene, under the watchful eyes of Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage, we ask Our Lady to intercede for these two bishops your new Bishop of Antipolo, the Most Reverend Rupert Santos, and the now um, Emeritus Bishop of Antipolo, His Excellency Francisco de Leon. May Our Lady watch over the two of you 
in your respective ministries, you, Bishop De, uh, De Leon, as you go into retirement and enjoy a much deserved time of vacation and rest and relaxation, and you, Bishop Santos, as you begin your ministry in this diocese. May God bless you and thank you. Please all stand.
announcement. There will be a photo opportunity after the Mass by order. First, the Apostolic Nuncio, Cardinal Advincula, Bishop Ruperto, Bishop Francis, Bishop Gabby, and Bishop Nolly. This will be followed by Bishop Ruperto with the bishops. Then Bishop Ruperto with the Rizal Provincial Government officials, the city and municipal mayors, and the mayor of Marikina. Then Bishop Ruperto with all the priests. Then Bishop Ruperto with the priests of the Diocese of Antipolo. Bishop Ruperto with his family and relatives. Then Bishop Ruperto with the seminarians of the Diocese of Antipolo. Then Bishop Ruperto with the indigenous people. Bishop Ruperto with the groups from his apostolates. Bishop Ruperto with the guests from the Diocese of Bataan. Then Bishop Ruperto with the Bataan LGU. Lastly, Bishop Ruperto with other groups. Please be reminded that only the official photographers are allowed at the center aisle. Kindly refrain from using smartphones to avoid distraction. Please be guided accordingly. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. the Apostolic Nuncio, Cardinal Advincula, Bishop Ruperto, Bishop Francis, Bishop Gabby, and Bishop Nolly for the, for, for, for the photo portrait. The bishops, please proceed in front.
the city and municipal mayors and the mayor of Manila. Gentle reminder, kindly refrain from using smartphones to avoid distractions.